there, I'm Patricia Nolan Brown. I'm an inventor and I'm the author of Idea to Invention, What You Need to Know to Cash In on Your Inspiration. And I'm hoping to help the average person become an inventor because you don't have to go broke trying to have the inventing. Hello everybody and welcome to Technical Tuesday number five. Today we're going to go over step number two out of six and this step is called cook it you've done your research in step one now you're ready to move forward with the idea that you've chosen I'd like to give you a quote from one of my role models Julia Child I loved her she was this great anomaly on TV I loved watching Julia Child it was something new on TV to watch, and she cracked me up. I loved the format of her shows. She was great. Okay. We're gonna make buff bourguignon. Her quote goes like this. It's all theory until you see for yourself whether or not something works. Which brings us into this step two. Because now you have to prove that your product works or does what you're claiming it to do. You can do this via a prototype, which can be very simply made. I like to do prototypes because I like to build things. I've made them out of cardboard and tape, but I've also done 3D plastic models because I was interested in the process. So I learned it. And you don't need to know coding anymore. It's pretty easy to do. It just takes some practice. Unless you go to this next step, your idea will stay in the realm of imagination and the world will miss out on your great idea. So it has to be pushed forward. Now I don't want to confuse you and throw in more information but there are six traits I call success traits that throughout all of these six practical steps it'll be helpful to know them and I gave them the acronym INVENT. I is for inquisitive. We went over that in the last Technical Tuesday. Why it's important to stay curious. N is nerve. You've got to get a tough skin. V is for voice. Find out what makes you passionate about your product and able to speak about it. Find your voice. E is for energy. You have to have a lot of energy to push your ideas forward mind, body, and spirit, I believe are all related in these six steps. And in any business model, it helps to know how to energize yourself. And I will go over these success traits in great, greater detail with strategies for you because a lot of inventors give up too soon. Yes, because they run out of energy or they don't have the nerve or they can't find their voice. Anyways, N stands for nourish which of course means to nourish your dream. Set aside time every single day to nourish your dream. Like a plant, if you don't nourish the plant, it'll die. That's exactly the same as your idea. You've got to nourish your dream. And T is tenacity, which speaks for itself. You've got to hang on and hang in there, okay? So those six traits, invent, go with these six steps. And in combination, if you can think of those six traits going through every single stage of this game, I believe that you will persevere and you'll be successful. Because we're all human beings trying to sell our idea to other human beings. So we need these traits for success. And you can beef these traits up. Okay, back to cook it. So you take the ingredients of your idea and you cook them into something real. You need to tend several pots at once, just like you're going to do at Thanksgiving dinner or the upcoming dinner party that you're going to have. Uh, but you are the head chef. You're in control of this dinner and you're gonna tend to all the pots and you're gonna come out with a beautiful product in the end. Write the following down. Take a picture with your phone to gather the following information. The product name, the price ranges, anything that's similar to it or that you think might be uh, made of similar products, just write down low, middle, high prices or low to high. 
you want to fall in the middle unless you have an exclusive a fancy or beefed up version of a product then you'll be on the higher end you want to get an idea of what's already selling in the stores what price range people are willing to buy your product for and reverse engineer from there figure out how to get it made for that price note the materials that are used is it plastic is it wood is it metal what does the product claim it does write it down make note of the packaging is it a box is it a header and a baggie is it a clamshell plastic one of those hard to open deals because that gives you an idea of how yours should be packaged for this particular store should you want to venture your idea if your intent is solely to license your product to a company already in the game then you don't have to go wild with packaging because they will end up doing their own packaging and one of the most important things to get down in that picture on your phone or write it down is the manufacturer who makes the product and on every single package even if you have to turn it over and find the small print it'll say manufactured by this is your list this is your golden list of potential licensees don't pay a company that says they can give you a list of companies looking for ideas because many times those lists are obsolete people move around companies move around the best thing you can do and the most up-to-date thing you can do is go into the stores today find out who manufactures that product and that's who you're going to approach to see if they'll take your idea as an extension to their line they're already in the stores they already have the contacts they already have the factory setting everything up that's your list that's who you want to approach to license your product you're going to venture your product you're studying that product product to see how it's made and packaged etc the price range this is valuable valuable information and it's all free zero dollars don't pay anyone to do that nobody can tell you that your product is an exact fit for someone else and they'll be the agent in the middle collecting money for the company you could have directly gone to and make the profit that you deserve now I know this seems like a whole other job for you to do, but if you're not already doing it, you need to get on social media. Now you don't have to be on every platform and try to get a million followers because the number of followers isn't as important as getting people that you can engage with. You want to get people who are interested in you or your product. So even when I wrote my book, it was a traditionally published book. So I had a book agent and a publisher. And they don't take on people anymore who don't have at least some presence, and the bigger the better, on social media because of how valuable it is to market things for free. So if you're going to be serious in the game of product development, you need to get on Facebook, Twitter. Start with those. There's a lot of pots now on the stove. You want to protect your idea with a provisional patent application and get on to the USPTO.gov, the Patent and Trademark Office, and research, read, 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 uh, how, you, how you prepare your own provisional patent application. Now, disclaimer, I'm not an attorney, but this is based on my experience. Had these been around when I first started, I know in my heart I would have done my own because I didn't have the money to go to the attorney for every single idea. Beyond that, they're very, very valuable. And I have had patents written that because, they, because the attorney used a particular word, it limited me. I would have known to make that a little more broad. So learn about this stuff. It's $65. You don't have much to lose. Um, protect your idea. 
so you can show companies your sell sheet and you can go forward and and give them information about your product idea now another really valuable tool is a product demonstration video and you can do this on YouTube get a YouTube account they're free look around I did a, when I was studying social media I just got on there got my accounts and just looked looked I didn't wasn't posting anything I was studying it studying it studying it and then I began posting it's not hard to do and you don't have to have polished videos they don't have to be perfect they just have to show the uh, potential licensee or the store buyer what your product does that's better or different than other products that you believe they will like now you don't show all the intricacies of the whole design or how it's made or the secrets in there but you show them a broad picture like if you have a golf club you're claiming or a golf ball claiming that it's 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 the best golf ball it goes the furthest out of any golf ball ever made you go out into a field or on a golf course or in your backyard and you hit the golf ball but you don't show them what's in the golf ball that makes it go that far or in the golf club then you start working with them if they're interested you get into what's called a license agreement so what you want to do is get a sell sheet in this step cook it sell sheet a product demo and to do that you might have to make a little prototype just kind of rig up something that already exists that's what I did with my products I found a mirror that already existed I threw a little cardboard angle on it put it in the car I shot from a distance in the car a side view of the baby in the car seat and a, this mirror that was on the the upholstery but I didn't show how it was attached and I didn't show any details of it that's key then they want more information and you can get into more details once you're protected with your provisional patent application so when a company says well you patent protected you can say yes I have a provisional patent application, so I'm patent pending status. Bing. Another reason to get on social media. LinkedIn is a beautiful tool to find people that you need in these stores. For instance, you can put in a store, get a LinkedIn account. You don't have to put much on yours, although you do want to start building up your LinkedIn account to look professional. You can put in a search on LinkedIn, this is totally free. Put in the store name, Staples, Staples Product Manager, New Product Manager. See what names come up and their titles will be underneath the name and you can contact them directly. I do this with LinkedIn and I do it with Twitter. I find out where these people are and even the president answers his own tweets. So Twitter is usually a personal account and LinkedIn is a personal account so you don't have to go through all these gatekeepers that are keeping the walls up from you getting to the correct people you simply talk to them as you would another human being in a normal conversation hey I'm a product developer I've got this idea that I think would be gr a great extension to your line and the other reason to put the search in even if you don't go through LinkedIn just a clear Google search or whatever uh, search engine you use staples everything will come up about staples learn about the company so that when you're talking to these people in the future you know about their company and you have some information about their company and they feel that you are very interested in their company and you know about it you've done your due diligence and they like that another thing companies like is if you have some proven sales proof of concept that this thing will even sell so we're getting ahead of ourselves here but you can um, put together a website very cheaply if not free and you can uh, put this drawing of your idea on there once you're protected by your patent application and get a feel for people who want to buy it you know or you can do a survey online all this is free you can do a survey on Twitter you can do these surveys to get an idea but again I don't want you to get bogged down by everybody's opinions you know I want you to go right to the person who makes the decisions and see what they think because you only have to convince one 
person in this whole world that your idea is worth them taking on. And just like any relationship in any business or family or marriage, they will not work with you if you're a pain in the <laughs> You have to be patient. You have to be someone that they're willing to work with. If they don't want you to have a lot of uh, input after they take your product on, that's fine. Just keep an eye out, but you don't have to be calling them every day, bugging them. Um, they're really buying you. And that's an old cliche, but it's very true. They want a relationship with you that is uh, going to be an easy one for them and a win-win. So go on the USPTO.gov site, look at the provisional patent applications, get comfortable with how you write them. If you're not comfortable, you can go to an attorney and there'll be probably anywhere between twelve and two thousand twelve hundred and two thousand dollars to do what you can do yourself. Um, but a lot of people aren't comfortable with this and there's so many other things they can be doing. If you want to go that route, that's perfectly fine. Whatever you're comfortable with. Because a patent attorney that you pay, uh, if you're uncomfortable, is certainly a good option for people who just don't want to touch it. But stay involved with your patent attorney when they're writing the patent. And make sure they listen to you. So in Cook It, on the stove, you have your sell sheet, your product demo video, you're getting on social media, and you're, you're approaching accounts on that. And you've also studied and implemented your provisional patent application before you reveal your idea in detail to anybody. In future episodes, I'll take each one of those things that are on your burners on your stove and go into it in more detail. Stay curious, stay creative, and move forward with your ideas until they pop. See you next time.